All right, so now we're gonna start unit four, which is the impulse momentum unit. And um, let me explain why we need it. So we, we've learned kinematics, we've learned forces, we've learned work and energy, and we can solve a lot of problems, but work and energy cannot solve all problems. There are other forms of energy that exist that are much more complicated to model. So, so far, you know, the energy forms we talked about was kinetic energy and gravitational potential and spring potential, but there are other forms that we don't normally model. And in particular, one specific case, which we'll get to later on, is collisions result in the loss of mechanical energy, which can be very difficult to analyze because there's energy in like chemical bonds, there's energy in, there's like nuclear energy, there's all other forms of energy that if you continue learning physics, you'll learn all about, and we cannot model that with work and energy. So work and energy can't, can't do it. And again, we could resort to forces and kinematics to do everything, but again, it can be very complicated. And so sometimes more simplistically, we can solve problems a lot easier by using linear, like uh, impulse momentum. And so there's a, that's, that's really the reason. It's most of the stuff we do the rest of the uh, rest of the uh, of AP Physics 1, other than fluids, is really just using simplified models that allow us to solve problems a lot more easily than requiring very, very complicated math. Okay, so let's take a look at where this comes from. So first of all, again, it's all derived from the same principle, F equals MA, and we'll use this as M, um, we'll replace the acceleration with the change in velocity over change in time. Now, if we move this, this portion of the time up, F delta T is equal to M delta V here, and we, 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 we define a quantity, okay? We say MV, is known as the quantity P, which we call the momentum, okay? Then this is really, because this is really MV final minus MV initial, you can think of this as final momentum minus initial momentum, okay? And so this is just a rearrangement of Newton's laws, but the left side of here is called the impulse, and the right side we call the change in momentum, change in momentum if we define m times v to be the momentum. Now, a couple things to keep in mind with this quantity. I know it doesn't, because we did a lot of algebra, it doesn't really appear that way, but it turns out that momentum is a vector, right? It is a vector quantity. So you might think of this as if, if you think of very similar, like, like work was the change in energy, right? This is what we did um, in the previous unit, work was the change in energy. Here, impulse is the change in momentum. But remember, this was a scalar quantity. That was one of the advantages. Momentum, while it doesn't require us to use energy, is a vector quantity. That means it has a direction associated with this. So the impulse is, is this. It's really important to recognize that these are vectors, not scalars. So when we do our analysis, we always have to keep in mind they are vectors just like forces or our kinematic variables, okay? That part is still equivalent. So let's take a look at some examples here on how we might do something like this. So I push a 20 kilogram block horizontally with a force of 100 newtons. So if we look at this, um, and uh, we're gonna put 100 newtons here. This is a 20 kilogram block. If I push the block for 10 seconds, so I do it for 10 seconds, assume there's no friction, the block starts from rest. Um, how fast is the block moving? So we're gonna move it. So if we did it, I'm gonna do it first through kinematic and forces. We could have done this with kinematic and forces, right? Um, Let's say it's initially at rest. So initial velocity is zero. I didn't say it, but let's do it. And I wanna know how the velocity here is and the time here, it takes 10 seconds. And I, if I do our kinematics process, you might say, okay, well, I don't need to know how far it's going. The initial velocity is zero. Final velocity is what I would like to know. The acceleration I don't know, and the time is 10. So I need to know the acceleration. How would I find the acceleration? I would do our free body diagram stuff, right? To do F net equals MA. So then we'd have 20 G gravity acting downward. We'd have a normal force. We have 100 Newtons going to the right. And then we are accelerating to the right, which is all we care about. The If we say right is positive, then we would say doing F net equals MA, the only force horizontally is 100. The mass is 20. And so the acceleration is five meters per second squared. So that would be five. And then we could do V equals V zero plus AT. And that's gonna be zero plus five times 10. And that's gonna give you 50 meters per second. Okay, so that's our, that's unit one and two way we would do something like that, right? Let's try doing it with this impulse momentum analysis. So 
Instead of doing all of that, we're going to say this part here. So we're going to say, well, you did 100 newtons over 10 seconds, and that would be mv final minus mv initial. The mass was 20 times the final minus the mass times the initial was zero. So that's 20 VF is equal to 1,000. And the final velocity is going to be 1,000 divided by 20, and that's going to give you uh, 50 meters per second. So you can see how simple, how much simpler it was, right? Like this wasn't that bad, right? Like if we did all the process, but like this was relatively straightforward. Now, a couple things to keep in mind. This is an external force. So we're going to think about systems later on, but we think about the external force just like we do work in energy. Um, the work was the external work. This is from an external force, depending on how you define the system. But this is a much simpler way to do impulse and momentum. Okay. And um, let's take a look at another problem here. So a student of mass MS is standing on a smooth surface, uses a stick to push a disc of mass D. So let's draw like a nice little picture. We have this guy. He's got a little, we'll put it, we'll make it stick. Like, we'll make it like a hockey stick. Okay, he's a hockey stick here. He's going to push this disc here. Okay. Um, so he has a mass MS. This has a mass MD. The student exerts a constant horizontal force FH. So he's going to apply FH to it over the time interval from zero to TF while pushing the disc. Assume there's not negligible friction. Be assume there's negligible friction with the disc on the surface. Assuming the disc begins at rest, so the initial velocity here is zero. Determine an expression for the final speed of the disc relative to the surface. Express your answers in terms of this. So this is going to be impulse is the change in momentum will be a lot easier. Again, you could do kinematics like we did before, but like this would be a little bit simpler. So we say we're doing FH. And the time period we're doing it is TF minus zero, right, which is just TF. And that's going to give you the final, which is um, MD, mass of the disk, times the velocity of the disk is the final velocity, and it starts at rest. And so then you can solve for this by just dividing the MD. So our VD is just going to be FHTF divided by MD, right, like that. Assume there's negligible friction between the student's shoes and the surface. After a time t, if the student slide with speed vs, to derive an equation for the ratio vd to vs. Well, let's think about the student. Well, so we're pushing on the the puck with the fh. That means the the student is experiencing a force fh equal and opposite by Newton's third law, right? So we're going to do the exact same thing for the student. We're going to say fh over the time t of same impulse. Right, because equal and opposite, that's Newton's third law of motion. If I push on the disc with FH, it's going to push back on me with the same FH. And now he's going to go to the left here. So we'll just say MVF, and we'll just say left is positive because he's going to go to the left here. MVS, this is final velocity by MV0. This is the mass of the student. That's the change in momentum. So V0, he starts at rest, I think. Yeah, he's going to start at rest. And so his VS is going to be FHTF over ms and so now we can do the ratio what is vs or vd divided by vs we're just simply going to divide the two fhtf divided by md divided by fhtf divided by ms so those will cancel and then this will be multiplying by the reciprocal you'll get ms divided by md you might think like well do i need to have a minus or negative sign well these are all speeds uh, yeah, these are all speeds, so it doesn't really matter if it's positive or negative there. Although we should treat it like that way for the purposes of vector. That's why I explicitly said I'll make left positive in this case, because he's the force is to the left, and he's going to be going to the left. If I made right positive, so let's say we did right positive and I did this calculation, then you would want to say negative FH. Why? Because the force is pointing to the left. And then you would say the VS is negative because he's also going to the left. So you would make it negative MS VS. So the negatives would cancel in that case. So you'd still get the same speed, but you'd have the minus signs to account for it. Again, with impulse momentum, we do need to treat it like a vector, okay?